Oh man, just drove all over that. What's up guys, welcome back to, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're actually gonna be talking about the i8. So I've been doing a lot of these videos where I talk about the i8, five things I like, five things I dislike, and uh, actually I haven't even made the five things I like video, because I don't wanna do just yet. I think it kinda integrates with this video, and which is the reasons why I actually bought this car over the R8. This car honestly came on my radar probably about a year ago, and I actually fell in love with the car, other than the fact about the three cylinder. Three cylinder is honestly probably the biggest joke about this car. Uh, and also the hybrid battery is also a joke. I mean, come on, like 20 miles maximum in range, that's also a joke. And that was in the video that I dislike about this car, is the fact that it has a three cylinder and the fact that it has a very, very small hybrid battery. But when you combine the two, this car is actually a pretty darn fun car to drive. And I actually enjoy this car very much. So let me actually get into the whole point to why, actually why I bought this. Like, what's the biggest deal breaker between this and the R8. So let's just look at the, 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 the positives of the R8. The R8 has a gated manual, which is probably my favorite, and it has the V8, which is great for daily driving. But again, it's a V8. But then again, it's a supercar. So like a supercar V8 with a, with a manual gearbox, it's, it's amazing. It's absolutely gorgeous. And the car has aged so well. It looks absolutely stunning, the R8. For the money, for the money though, similar miles, 2008 R8 gated manual V8 with about 30,000 miles was the same price as this, but this car is approximately eight years newer and under warranty. Unlike the R8 where it's super old, the V8, and it's probably gonna have a bunch of issues. And there are some issues where if like the AC goes out, you have to remove the whole engine, and that can cost upwards of four to $5,000. And if anything happens to the clutch on that car, again, very expensive things. This is my first supercar. A lot of you guys might think that's a very controversial word to say for this car, but I do think it is an amazing supercar in its own way. What sold me on this car over the R8 was the fact that it has modern technology. Do you guys know that most of the R8s don't even have auxiliary? Like, don't have auxiliary. Like, how are you supposed to play music? You're supposed to put like something in the cassette. Like, it's like, why? It's just very, very, very older style. It is very driver focused. Obviously, you just focus on, you know, if you got the manual gearbox and the V8, you would say, you know, you got the sound, you got the transmission, you don't need anything else. That's what a real supercar is about. And, and in essence, I, I agree with you guys. But at the same time, I love a car where it's very modern. You have a lot of technology, something that's different than other cars. Something you guys probably didn't know about i8. I8s actually come fully loaded. Unlike R8s, you actually have to spec it out. This thing comes fully clear broad. First thing. Second thing comes with the Harman Kardon sound system. It comes with all the you know the, the, the necessities. Like it comes with everything. It has heated seats, parking sensors, 360 camera, all the good stuff. I mean, literally, I mean, it has literally everything. If you guys think of it, like it has paddles, and obviously it's a supercar, like BMW's version of a supercar. Especially you can say it's a hybrid supercar. So it's not like a full-blown engine beast supercar. It's it's a hybrid supercar. That's what it is. So if you guys want to put it in that category, it's fine. I bought this because personally, me as like buying something at this magnitude obviously I did not buy it cash at buying at this magnitude this kind of price range if anything was to happen to the r8 or the i8 if i had to choose between the two this one have warranty and even if it doesn't have warranty you have an eight year battery warranty and you have i believe a five year from the manufacturing date for the engine as well and this car is still fairly you know this is 2016 so from the factory i already have warranty and then i have the extended certified pre-owned warranty that came with the car when i purchased it also when i got in that car i pretty much felt the brand new smell of a car like i don't think that you'll get that anymore in r8s so they're really old over 12 years old if you get the first year this thing i believe came in 2014 um i, I do not recommend buying a 2014 though i've heard they have a lot of issues but then again i guess it's just you and your luck i went with the 2016 mainly because of the headlight options and just for the fact that it is two years newer and it's within the warranty when you buy this car so for the same price as an r8 i got a fully loaded fully specced out i8 2016 i got the laser headlights which were a seven thousand dollar option at the time again this car was hundred and sixty thousand dollars more than the r8 when it first came out but this car is already the same price as an r8 and it's eight years newer and that's just because it didn't do anything great other than the look but for now it's depreciated price it's absolutely a steal of a deal and if you think about it guys a car like this a car like this guys is never gonna go under 50 to 55,000. I picked this up for around 68. This is how much I got my car for. And if you guys think about it, I can enjoy this car for another 10 years and you'll never see a car with doors that 
go up. Cars that's fully loaded by BMW. Very limited amount of these cars produce. This car will never ever bought, like I pretty much got a car that's 2016 that won't depreciate. Now you could get an M4, you could get an M3, but they will go eventually to $20,000. This is the same price as a brand new M3 or M4, but this car will hold its value because it's already took all of its depreciation in the first four years. Again, mine is also the fully spec. So I got the leather, the brown leather interior, the seat belts, I got the crystal white paint job, and of course the headlights. The doors for me, I also thought was really awesome. I mean, it really gives you that supercar vibe. The R8, the doors aren't really that cool. They're pretty much regular doors. Even the door handles, they're pretty regular. And now a lot of you guys don't like hybrids, but this thing, you know, I haven't filled up the tank in a month. In a month, I have not filled up the tank. That is insane to think. I haven't filled up the tank. I get to drive this every single day. I mean, people say the R8 is the daily driving supercar. I think this is the new daily driven supercar, mainly because it is a joy to drive. You feel special driving this car, absolutely, especially with the doors. It just literally makes you feel like you got what you paid for, again, for the used price, the depreciated price. If you paid $160,000, you didn't really get what you what you really paid for. I, I, don't, I wouldn't buy this car brand new. But for the used market, absolutely, you feel like you got what you, what you paid for. You, literally, everything's absolutely stunning. The quality of everything is so, so, so good. Unlike the i3, it was made of recycled things. This was not, thankfully. If it was made of recycled parts, I probably would not even think about it. You can run this car on just pure electricity you can run on just pure gasoline or you could run it 50 50 and that's where you get the most amount of power uh, but obviously you waste the most amount of fuel and efficiency but if you want to care about efficiency you could just put it on just just electricity run it no gas no issues no sounds and then if you want to go crazy like me like i have some plans for this car where i'm gonna be using some engine mods full exhaust system this thing's gonna be crazy loud when i want to and then it'll sound like a prius when when you know i see a cop which is pretty freaking awesome if you ask me now i've showed you guys a lot of things about this car that i actually do not like there's a lot of things i don't like but when you guys weigh it with the r8 the r8 doesn't have that many Many things it has the looks yes has it dated no looks absolutely gorgeous than the r8 it's the first gens i absolutely love them transmission check engine check you have all of that reliability probably one of the most reliable supercars when it just comes to naturally aspirated but if you guys think about this car you have the doors you have the technology you have the efficiency this is something for an entry-level supercar buyer in my personal opinion, for somebody that doesn't know if they're gonna be able to make the next payment because they're scared of something might break down on the car, then you probably shouldn't be thinking about an R8. I honestly was thinking about a financial situation. This car will not depreciate much anymore. This car, there's not many on the road. I can honestly say nothing bad when you get it for the used price. It literally is just such a bargain. I have literally people asking me on Instagram, how are you able to afford this car? How did you buy this car? Stuff like that. Genuinely, guys, I literally feel like anyone can afford this car. Like, honestly, 40,000 miles. I bought it with 38,000 miles, clean title. Um, from the dealership for the price of a brand new M4 is just insane to me. And you know, in terms of reliability, everything is just cheaper. The battery has the warranty, so do not worry about the battery. But the engine, it's a three cylinder. I mean, come on guys, maintenance and parts are very cheap. It actually came from a mini and just slightly changed up to handle more power. But you guys think about it, like all the parts and everything is just very cheap to maintain. Everything on this car is actually very, very, very cheap other than the paneling and the interior. Anything that's exclusive to this car obviously makes it very expensive. But in terms of driving every single day, I can literally drive this every single day. Uh, registration was actually cheaper to register this than my M3, believe it or not, because I think the M3 statistics and everything, even insurance, this thing only cost me $100 more to add to my insurance. Like it is actually a very, very, very affordable car to drive. And at the same time, you get yourself a foot, you know, you get, you get, you get a step inside of the supercar world, which I definitely think that in itself is amazing. Again, a lot of people might say this is not a supercar. Well, I mean, it is. It really is. It's a very entry level supercar. Like if you guys really think about the R8, the R8 is just a V8 manual. Like if you guys really think about it, naturally aspirated. 400 horsepower. The E92 M3 is a V8 manual, naturally aspirated, 400 horsepower. It's the same thing, really. Like, honestly, if you guys really think about it, 
then is that car really a supercar? It's an entry level supercar, but it's still a supercar, absolutely. So for all the people saying that this car is not really a supercar and the R8 is more of a supercar, you know, it's all honestly according to preference. I honestly think they're both amazing cars. I, I think they're both entry level supercars, especially considering you can get these cars nowadays for like 60 grand. They're no longer like over the $100,000 prices. But just someone like me and I have other cars, I still go to school, I'm thinking about getting married soon. So getting this car doesn't make me feel worried about my future because honestly, Honestly, it is just an overall well-rounded car. I think BMW did absolutely great with this car. They are actually releasing a 2024 version. It's called the i8M. Look it up, guys. It's gonna actually have, I think, around 600 horsepower. And I'm actually very excited to see it when it comes out as well. I know a lot of people complain about this interior and they say that this interior is just not really worth the money. And uh, again, guys, for $160,000, I don't think this is the interior you should get. I think the X5Ms have a better interior and that's just sad. This is very unique but it's not really worth $160,000. Now, is it worth $68,000? Absolutely. That's the thing, guys. For an entry level, for a price the same as an R8 that's made in 2008, you're getting a 2016 full technology, efficient, looks amazing, supercar doors. Like, this car is absolutely, and, and affordable to maintain and own. I think that this car, every single car enthusiast should at least try it. Just try the car and let me know what you guys think. For the money, is this car worth it to you guys? If you ask me as somebody that wanted an R8 since day one, I'll literally put up in my about section, ever since I sat in an R8 when I was a young jalapeno, <laughs> when I was a young jalapeno, I sat in an R8 and I said one day I need to get this car. I'm not talking down on an R8 whatsoever. They're both entry level supercars, both amazing cars in its own ways. The R8 being a a very driver focused, just raw feeling supercar, while this being, you know, just the, the look appeal, the the technology, the doors, just making you feel like that you have something special. And at the same time, very quick. Guys, this thing still pushes 360 horsepower with the tune 400. It'll be probably even faster than the R8. Because again, this car, guys, was super cool about it. Because not only can it get 400 horsepower to the wheels, but it's fully made out of carbon fiber. The whole car, guys, the whole frame, chassis, everything, the doors, everything's made out of carbon fiber. And if you guys think about that for the money, it's just an insane steal of a deal. This door is so light. I, I can't really say anything negative for the used price. I mean, for the new price, again, I made a whole separate video for that. But for the new price, I really can't say anything negative about it. Now, let me know, guys, after pretty much what I've told you guys, I'm just basically giving you guys my personal opinion. I, everyone has, and they're entitled to their own opinions. I absolutely love the R8. I, I am by no means somebody that wanted this car before the R8. I actually love the R8 far before this car. I'm making this video because I know a lot of people are looking between those two cars that are in the BMWs, that are in the Audis, and for good reason. Every car has its own thing that it's just great at and if it was up to me i want both of them let me know down below guys did i make the right decision would you guys buy an i8 or would you guys get an r8 and if so for what reason do you guys like the i8 or the r8 more i mean both amazing cars like i said but which one would you guys end up purchasing end of the day and did my opinion change your guys's opinion let me know without further ado guys i love y'all so much i'm gonna head home we have some dinner this is kind of a shorter video i had to film today uh because yeah we have some dinner with the family and i'm just trying to enjoy some time with the fam all that stuff we have some crazy crazy news coming to the channel really soon uh basically getting an m car on the channel i'm pretty excited for that definitely gonna be a rebuild as well because we, you know we all love our rebuilds and just you know it's very satisfying it's very satisfying it's very uh it's enjoyable to do and it's very enjoyable to watch so you can't beat it Without further ado, guys, <laughs> I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Yeah, yeah, let's go. I ain't the first with the curse, with the thirst that I wanna be better, not worse. Man, it hurts. I'm on this earth with my words, and I put them all together in cert, cause I wanna have worth.